I'm going to begin with a poem that's called uh, Welcoming the Flowers. I'm standing on the corner of Stanton and Clinton, waiting for the traffic light to change. A man is sitting on the steps of a building, holding his young son on his lap. He is eating fried chicken from Chico's takeout on Houston. He chews on the wings and feeds bits of the breast to his son. The man finishes eating, puts the leftover chicken and bones, fries and soda can in a paper bag and leaves it on the sidewalk. A brown dog from the neighboring building snoops around, gets its nose in the bag, chews on the bones, and makes a mess. A black cat sitting in a window watches wide-eyed, staring down at the dog, chicken bones, and grizzle. I see their past and present lives. The man eats the chicken, and the chicken was his mother, who had died two years ago of cancer. The dog chewing on the bones was his father, who had died five years ago of a heart attack. And the cat in the window is his grandmother, and his young son, whom he holds so tenderly, was the man who killed him in his previous life. His wife comes home with the groceries and takes the boy into the building. She had been his lover in many past lives and was his mother for the first time in this one. The world just makes me laugh. Fill what is empty, empty what is full, light as body, light as breath, welcoming the flowers. Daffodils baptized in butter, lilacs luxuriously licking the air, necklaces of wisteria bowing to magnolia mamas, the cherry blossoms are razor blades, the snow Dahlias sharp as cat piss. The lilies of the valley are lilies of fur, lilies of feather, lilies of fin, lilies of skin. The almost Miss America rose. They all look so good, and I get sucked into their meaty, earthy goodness. You make my heart feel warm. I lay my head on your chest and feel free. Filling what is empty, emptying what is full, filling what is empty, emptying what is full, filling what is empty, emptying what is full. The gods we know we are. The gods we knew we were. I smell you with my eyes and see you with my ears and feel you with my lips and taste you with my nose and hear you with my tongue. I want you to sit in my heart and smile. Words come from sound. Sound comes from wisdom, and wisdom comes from emptiness. Deep relaxation in great perfection. Welcoming the flowers. Armfuls of honeysuckle and columbine, red-tipped knives of Indian paintbrush, the fields 
of daisies are the people who betrayed me. The lupine were self-serving and unkind. Orchids are the tongues that lied. Hyacinths are the songs of suicides. The voluminous, voluptuous bougainvillea are flames licking what cannot burn. The big bunch of 1,000 red roses are all the people I made love to. Hit my nose with the stem of a rose. The poppies have pockets packed with narcotic treats. The chrysanthemums are a garland of skulls. I go to death willingly with the same comfort and bliss as when I lay my head on my lover's chest. Welcoming the flowers, the third bouquet is a crown of bluebells, a carillon of foxglove, a sunflower snuggles its head on my lap and gazes up at the sky. May all the tiny black insects crawling on the peony petals be my sons and daughters in future lives. Great balls of light, white, red, blue, concentric dazzle, yellow, green, great exaltation, the world just makes me laugh. May sound and light not rise up and appear as enemies May I know all sound as my sound. May I know all light as my light. May I know all phenomena as myself. May I realize original nature, not fabricated by mind, empty, naked awareness. This next poem I wrote in 1994, and it's called Just Say No to Family Values. On a day when you're walking down the street and you see a hearse with a coffin followed by a flower car and limos, you know the day is auspicious. Your plans are going to be successful. But on a day when you see a bride and groom and wedding party, watch out, be careful, it might be a bad sign. Just say no to family values and don't quit your day job. Drugs are sacred substances and some drugs are very sacred substances. Please praise them for somewhat liberating the mind. Tobacco is a sacred substance to sell. And even though you stopped smoking, show a little respect. Alcohol is totally great. Let us celebrate the glorious qualities of booze. And I had a good time being with you. Just do it. Just do it. Just don't not do it, do it. Christian fundamentalists and fundamentalists in general are viruses and they're killing us, multiplying and mutating and they're destroying us. Now you know, you gotta give strong medicine to combat a virus. Who's buying? Good acid, I'm flying. Slipping and sliding, slurping and slamming. I'm sinking, dipping and dripping and squirting inside you. Never fast forward a cum shot. Milk, milk, lemonade, round the corner where the chocolate's made. 
I love to see your face when you're suffering. <clears throat> Do it with anybody you want, whatever you want, for as long as you want, any time, any place when it's possible, and try to be safe in a situation where you must abandon yourself beyond all concepts. Just say no to family values. We don't gotta say no to family values. We never think about them. Just do it. Just make love and compassion. This next poem is a new poem, and I read it for the first time in New York on January 1st, and the second time in Paris at the Gallery Almain Reich, and this is the third time I'm going to perform. And it's called, what's it called? It Doesn't Get Better. It doesn't get better. It doesn't get better. It doesn't get any better. It doesn't get any better than this. It doesn't get any more fabulous. And as bad as it is, it does not get any better. Stuck in a traffic jam and the scenery is beautiful, irritating gusts of boredom and the radio is playing. If you don't like my oceans, don't swim in my seas. You can't hurt me, cause storms can't hurt the sky. S rotting human, neck long necklaces of rotting human skulls, symbolizing the triumph over abuse and injustice. Fat chance. Ring the alarm. You are addicted to anger and complaining. When you have hepatitis, everything seems yellow. My anger ate the goose that laid the golden eggs, thick bacon and a little something sweet. And the most surprising change is becoming the god of your enemy. The eagles fly below us. The illusion that makes life bearable, the illusion that makes life bearable, the illusion that makes life bearable, when you lose the illusion that makes life bearable, when you lose the illusion that makes life bearable, when you've lost whatever it is you believed or invented or imprinted or scarred by, unthinkable loss, deluded inside delusion, inside delusion, inside delusion, inside delusion. Everything is delusion, including wisdom. And then there's the illusion that makes life bearable, the illusion that makes life bearable, the illusion that makes life bearable. I'm here to do whatever is your pleasure. Empty words gone without a trace. All I had to do was get through it all I had to do was get through it. All I had to do was get through it. You can't win, you can't break even, and you can't even quit the game. The sand is snow, a hurricane in a drop of cum. You will find your true love in the end. You will find your true love in the end. You will find your 
true love in the end. When you die, you will find your true love in your mind. When you die, you will find your true mind. In the darkest night is the brightest light. Clear, unlocatable, emptiness, awareness. Thank you. La Sejetsa de la Strege, Wisdom of the Witches. On a cold, early November night, Mimo, Martino, and I climbed to the top of the Norman Rock Tower at Castel Mezzano. In the green lips of the trees, the Dolomite mountain peaks of Basilicata, big, broken, splintered teeth spiked the sky and a thin crescent moon. Fog blew in from the blackness. Clouds rolled in below and swirled around us. And exposed briefly by a beam of light, fled quickly, slipped back into the pitch black, and stumbled up and danced down the stone slopes and rushed in to touch, embrace, and welcome us. Hidden in the fog and mists were many witches, each a secret to herself. The white witch with the curved knife and the bella figura, the red witch made of ruby with a voluptuous body, the blue witch with an owl face rode a donkey with three legs. And the yellow witch wore a ball gown of gold brocade and carried a mongoose vomiting jewels. And the green witch had a hawk face, rode a camel, and scorpions came from her fingertips. And the beautiful witch with a smiling face held a lamp of the sun and moon. The witches of snow ate the witches of fog, and witches dressed in black rode white dogs, and danced, flew, chased, glided, and leaped over, and long dives from life to death. And witches who were rotting in hell swarmed screeching for joy. They were happy to see us. The witch Santa Merte was a skeleton with a grim reaper sickle and a blood-curdling grin. She usually wore black, but occasionally liked feather boas and sequin gowns and big fake jewels and necklaces and rings on each bone finger. She chain smoked cigarettes and joints, drank whiskey straight, and snorted drugs. She had no flesh, but loved sex and bliss. She danced exquisitely the criminal tango. Santa Merte answered the prayers of the poorest and most outcast. People in trouble adored her. Whores and drug dealers, car thieves, burglars, and con artists sought her protection. People prayed for the miracle of money for food and the lost and abandoned. Every single one who asked her help, she helped. Santa Merte was the wish fulfilling witch. The witch of poetry was Saraswati, and her sister Lakshmi was the witch of wealth. 
When Saraswati wrote great poems and sang beautiful songs, filling the world with wisdom and music, and became famous and adored for her brilliance, beauty, and compassion. Her sister Lakshmi got very jealous and did the most terrible things. She stole the cash and property, lied, invented false gossip, and had her excluded, and had the lawyers sue blocking everything from happening. She punished her for her success. Sweet revenge. That's why poets never have money. <laughs> poets are poor sisters with great clarity and great bliss. Put your ear to stone and open your heart to the sky. Put your ear to stone and open your heart to the sky. Put your ear to stone and open your heart to the sky. Put your ear to stone and open your heart to the sky. Ugly and beautiful witches, peaceful and wrathful witches, increasing and magnanimous witches are the outer displays of wisdom. Witches of water, witches of earth, witches of fire, witches of air, witches of space are the inner wisdoms. And witches of fabulous sex in the union of great bliss are the secret wisdoms. And witches of great compassion and emptiness are the innermost secret wisdoms. Mimo, Martino, and I climbed back down the rocky mountain path as if feathers were under our feet. And as we walked down below the clouds on steps cut in the rock, toward the medieval stone houses that clung to the edge of the mountain peak. Thousands of modulating waves of sweet sound sang in silence. And this next one is called There Was a Bad Tree. And I started writing it in uh, July of 2001 in New York City and finished by the end of that year, 2001. There was a bad tree. There was a bad tree the people hated. The leaves gave off a foul smell and the flowers had a bitter stink. If you got too close, you vomited. The fruit was poison, one bite and you were dead. Everyone really disliked it. The bad tree stunk. They talked endlessly about it and came to a big decision. Cut it down. They chopped with axes and barely made a dent. Wearing breathing masks, they whacked at it and whacked at it and nibbled and chipped. Oily powder from the shiny dark green leaves got on their skin, blistered, and was really itchy, and they scratched bloody red. They put on protective gear with oxygen and went at it with electric buzz saws and heavy equipment. Working 24 hour shifts, finally they cut it down. Everyone was very happy and celebrated the great victory, a noble deed well done, and they went to bed exhausted. The next morning, the bad tree had grown back, had sprung up new and bigger and more beautiful and ugly. It was very discouraging. They talked a lot about it, 
and cut it down again and poured gasoline on the roots and burned all the leaves and branches in a big fire. After the smoldering embers got cold, the tree grew back bigger, more bad, and really gorgeous. Other people had been watching from their houses, waiting their turn. They thought themselves smarter, with higher intellectual capabilities. They knew how to get rid of the tree. It was a growing plant, a wood tree that grew in the earth. They incinerated it, burned the roots with chemicals, vaporizing acids, and robotic lasers. Detonated on the ground, bombed from the air, hit with smart missiles, and bombarded with radiation. They made a fire storm and covered the ground with concrete and steel. The tree grew back more fresh, more elegant, even gracious, and really ugly. The wood was harder, darker, thick, hot muscle, and the leaves, full and lush, moved like underwater plants luxuriously in the breeze. It was extremely discouraging, extremely depressing, a catastrophe. They had made for themselves a hell world. They talked a lot about it and came to a big decision. The mayor resigned in disgrace, and those who had worked so hard left humiliated, departed, moved to the other side of town, stayed away. Then, out of the blue, appeared these beautiful people. They were simple and humble, and a little like peacocks, and seemingly well-intentioned with a great sense of humor. Radiantly relaxed, oozing loving kindness and compassion, they walked right up and started eating the leaves. They ate the leaves and enjoyed them, became happy, and laughed and laughed and chomped on more leaves. You could tell they really liked the taste. They pressed their cheek to the flowers, black velvet coated with transmission oil. They licked the sweet juices that seeped from the petals. The pollen was coal dust and petroleum gas. Burying their noses, they sucked in deep breaths, eating uh, the smell. Great bliss. They discovered the fruit hidden beneath the leaves, overripe mangoes with sticky eggplant skin hung like testicles, and inside the fruit was rotting meat like liver. The special people got their faces into the stinking slime and really got into it, inhaling with their lips and teeth and tongues. They licked and drank the thick red juice. The seeds, like Kabushan rubies, seemed particularly potent and were chewed with great delight. The fruit contained the five wisdoms. The men and women became luminous. Their skin was golden and their bodies almost transparent were clothed in shimmering rainbow lights. They became sleepy, yawned and curled up under the tree and took a nap. While they slept, music filled the air, lounging against the gnarled tree trunk and protruding roots, their huge bodies, colored red, yellow, blue, green, white, 
rested in great equanimity and radiated huge compassion. Inside the tree was the secret home of many demigods, hungry ghosts, and earth spirits who were very pleased with all the positive attention being paid. After years of abuse, mutilation, and destruction, they were thrilled, even though they were being ravaged and their flowers wrecked. At the root endings, there were jewels, diamonds and emeralds and rubies, which were stars in the sky of the world below. The beautiful men and women woke up and nibbled on the leaves again. They ate the leaves like deer, pausing between bites, looking up at the vast, empty sky. The leaves and fruit increased their clarity and bliss and introduced the nature of primordially pure wisdom mind. Thank you. I'm going to do uh, one more last poem, and it's called uh, Thanks for Nothing. And I started writing it on my 70th birthday in December of 2006. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> I want to give my thanks to everyone for everything. And as a token of my appreciation, I want to offer back to you all my good and bad habits as magnificent, priceless jewels, wish-fulfilling gems, satisfying your every need and want. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thanks. May every drug I ever took come back and get you high. May every glass of wine and vodka I ever drank come back and make you feel good, numbing your nerve ends, allowing the natural clarity of your mind to flow free. May all the suicides be songs of aspiration. Thanks that bad news is always true. May all the chocolate I've ever eaten come back rushing through your bloodstream and make you feel happy. Thanks for allowing me to be a poet, a noble effort doomed but the only choice. I want to thank you for your kindness and praise. Thanks for celebrating me. Thanks for the resounding applause. Thanks for taking everything for yourself and giving nothing back. You were always only self-serving. Thanks for exploiting my big ego and making me a star for your own benefit. Thanks that you never paid me. Thanks for all the sleaze. Thanks for being mean and rude and smiling at my face. I am happy that you robbed me. I am happy that you lied. I am happy that you helped me. Thanks. Grazie. Merci beaucoup. <clears throat> May you smoke a joint with William and spend some intimate time with his mind, more profound than any book he wrote. I give enormous thanks to all my lovers, beautiful men with brilliant minds, great artists, Bob, Jasper, Ugo. May they come here and make love to you. <laughs> and may my many other lovers of totally great sex, countless 
lovers of boundless, fabulous sex, countless lovers of boundless, fabulous sex, countless lovers of boundless, fabulous sex in the golden age of promiscuity. May they all come here and make love to you if you want. <laughs> May they hold you in their arms, ball into your heart's delight, ball into your heart's delight, ball into your heart's delight. <clears throat> May all the people who are dead, Alan, Brian, Cookie, Jack, and I do not miss any of them, I don't miss any of you, no nostalgia. It was wonderful that we loved each other, but I do not want any of them back. <laughs> now, if any of you are attracted to any of them, may they come back from the dead and do whatever is your pleasure. May they multiply and be the slaves of whomever wants them. But you won't want them as masters, as their demons. May Andy come here, fall in love with you, and make each of you a superstar. Everyone can have Andy, everyone can have Andy, everyone can have Andy, everyone can have an Andy. <laughs> Huge hugs to my friends who betrayed me. Every friend became an enemy sooner or later. Big hugs to my loves that failed. I am delighted you are vacuum cleaners sucking everything into your dirt bag. You are none other than a reflection of my mind. Thanks for the depression problem and feeling like suicide every day of my life. And now that I'm 72, I'm happily almost there. <laughs> 20 billion years ago, in the primordial wisdom soup, beyond comprehension and indescribable, something without substance moved slightly and became something imperceptible moved again and became invisible, moved again and became a particle and particles, moved again and became a quark, and again and became quarks, moved again and again and became protons and neutrons, and the 12 dimensions of space. Tiny fireballs of primordial energy bits tossed back and forth in a game of catch between particles. Where the pebble hits the water, this is where the trouble began. Something without substance became something with substance. Why did this happen? Because something substance-less had a feeling of missing out on something. Not getting it was not getting it, not getting it, not getting it. Not getting something when there was nothing to have. From that primordially endless potential to modern day reality, 20 billion years later, has produced me and my stupid grasping mind, has produced me and you and my grasping mind. May Rinpoche and all the great Tibetan lamas who loved me come back and love you more. May they hold you in their wisdom hearts, bathe you in all pervasive compassion, give you pith instructions, and may you, with the diligence 
of Olympic athletes do meditation practice and may you with great confidence realize the true nature of mind. America, thanks for the neglect. I did it without you. Let us celebrate poetic justice. You and I never were, never tried to do anything, and never succeeded. Thanks for introducing me to the face of the naked mind. Thanks for nothing.